and then we'll go ahead and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Jeremy Mask present. Melissa Keller present. Roger Canoy present. Monica Strange present. Eddie Venami present. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, we'll go ahead and review the I-35 mission statement and our district po uh, priorities. Uh, mission statement reads, the Interstate 35 Community School District exists to develop lifelong learners and responsible, productive, successful citizens in an ever-changing society. Our district priorities, one, articulate and support a cohesive student-centered pre-K through 12 vision for continuous school improvement. Two, engage in effective teaching and relevant learning for the 21st century. And number three, operate with fiscal integrity, efficiency, and effectiveness. Everybody should have gotten the agenda. Um, if there's anything that needs to be done to the agenda or a motion to approve the agenda would be welcome. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second that. It's been properly moved and seconded that we approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Open forum. Residents, students, parents, guardians, and staff members of the district may address the board about relevant topics. Those who wish to speak must sign up at the beginning of the meeting. Speaker's participation is limited to three minutes, five minutes. Um, Five, it's my eyes, I'm getting old. Five minutes per meeting. We ask speakers to remember that <clears throat> Iowa law prohibits the board from discussing specific employees or students or their performance. We do have a couple individuals who have signed up to speak. And we will start with uh, Mr. Gibson. Sorry I've missed the last couple. I don't think this mic's on. Um, uh, I want to talk to you about why I've missed the last couple, actually. Um, it's primarily because I've been traveling to uh, Tampa for work. And the reason why we're doing this is strategic planning for my work. So my team, approximately 285 people globally flying to Tampa, and we review the strategic priorities, and they present to me some options uh, in order to meet those strategic priorities that, that I have. And we discuss those as a group, and um, ultimately I'll make a final decision and direct the staff on what vendors we're gonna buy, for example. And I'm gonna draw this back home here, for example. So um, that's what I've been doing. Uh, unfortunately, each time, each month, I've been traveling to Tampa, fell on board meetings. So uh, this time I'm, I'm happy to be able to be here. How that relates to what I'm talking about here is, um, I'm gonna go back to transparency again. We have this very long set of decisions that are gonna be made after this meeting. So you're gonna adjourn and then you're gonna go into a meeting and this was recently published, right? So not a whole lot of time for constituents and members of the community to talk with their board members about this. Thought about knocking on your doors over the holidays and calling you, but I didn't want to because I wanted to spend the holiday with my daughter. She was back from Texas. Um, in particular, how this relates back to what I was talking about is um, some of these decisions on here, I'm actually recommending the board not approve tonight. Um, uh, that they ask Sharon to go back and do a little bit more due diligence and some transparency for the community, particularly section 5C and 5D, where we talk about the legal counsel recommendation and the school insurance recommendation. I don't see any other options. So my team gives me options, first, second, third, and what their recommendation should be and some of the pros and cons before I make that decision. There's not a whole lot of transparency in here is why we have EMC. And how that specifically relates to our strategic priorities and our rural district where we're at, I'm gonna bring this back to the safety concerns that I've brought up in the past. We need to have better security for our kids here 
And a lot of that has to do with insurance companies and insurance companies, whether or not they support that. So I would ask questions. Have we talked to Spirit Lake? Have we talked to the Cherokee School District? What insurance company are they using that supported their decisions to allow their staff and teachers, um, uh, or I'm sorry, in particular staff, uh, to go armed to protect the students? So those are some of the questions before we just decide on EMC, who I'm guessing is probably not gonna be very supportive. What are some other options? The same thing with our legal counsel. What are some other options, pros and cons, that represent our school district in our unique um, situation that we're rural, we're not an inner city, we're not near police response like our sheriffs all the way in Madison County. So um, that relates back to, are we looking at these things and looking at our situation and making sure we're making recommendations for our legal counsel and our insurance that meets the needs of our district and look at those to the community and transparency. Why did we choose that legal counsel? What were our other options? Why did we choose that insurance company and what were our, our other options? So um, I would again formally request the board defer 5C and 5D and ask for more information um, from the administration on what other options are out there and what are the pros and cons associated with them and how do they support our unique needs um, as, as a rural uh, school district. So, um, and again, I'll go back. This should have been published two weeks ago. So we could all have the opportunity to discuss with our board members and, and, and digest it and have a, a dialogue in the community not just before a holiday, and then we have you know a board meeting on the Monday after the holiday. So, thank you for your time. I appreciate it, and look forward to your meeting this after after this one. So, thank you, Mr. Gibson. Um, Kevin Stewart. Kevin Stewart, I live just south of town. You guys have seen me here before. And so uh, just a couple things I want to comment on from last, uh, last meeting. A lot of discussion about substitute teachers and substitute teacher pay. So after the uh, meeting, I kind of went on the website to see if I could find anything on qualifications for substitute teachers or what the district needs. Either I was looking in the wrong space or there's nothing there. And so uh, if that's a serious issue, uh, we kind of need to have that locally uh, published so that, uh, you know, we have lots of retirees in the area um, that quite frankly might be very good substitute teachers if they just know what the qualifications are. Also looking at our staff, staffing uh, per student at I-35 is pretty high which I mean, that's a good thing, but have we fully qualified everyone within our staff that we have internal people that we can lean on to substitute teach that are already on staff, already on benefits that we can leverage. So I think there's some, some opportunities there. Uh, the other thing we talked about, or you talked about is retention of, of staff and you know, in business, we've been through, we go through, I mean, that's a primary concern. When people leave our company, first thing they tell us, it's about dollars. When we go to the recruiters who they're now working with, we find that the reason they left is it was either they hated the working environment or they hated their supervisor. And quite frankly, every position I've left, I left because of the supervisor. And so it may require some hard questions looking internally. What environment are we creating here at I-35? And are we creating the environment that people want to work here, want to stay here, and like who they're working for, uh, both, uh, both as a uh, organization and their direct supervisor? The other thing that was talked about was uh, stagnation of, uh, of enrollment. We have some really cool things going on uh, in this part of the uh, part of the country, and as I've gone to work virtually, um, I've been thankful for fiber optics up to my door, and I live two miles out in the country. So, 
maybe that's something we need to uh, focus in on as attracting people to this area, that for the uh, commuters, uh, for those working at home, we do have a pretty good environment for people to work at home. Uh, also, uh, yeah, it, it would appear that we have some pretty good parking spaces on stat, on uh, location. It, do we have some opportunities, especially with the daycare, to allow commuter parking and carpooling from I-35? I and I know there's liabilities that go along with that. It's not just a, a simple decision, uh, but, uh, but that is something that, um, that might create a reason for um, you know, these uh, young parents to uh, consider locating in I-35 so that we can uh, make sure that we have sufficient students coming into I-35 to obtain the, uh, the optimum financing that we need to, uh, to have to run the district. And that's all, all I had for tonight. I will concur. Uh, I do agree with the previous speaker uh, that uh, I think there are opportunities to allow teachers to uh, personal carry. They have to know what they're doing if they're going to do that. And uh, no teacher should be feel like they're obligated to carry a firearm that if you're not comfortable for, by for carrying a comfortable carrying a firearm and i do have my permit to carry uh by all means do not carry that you have to be proficient and know what to do in an emergency situation uh otherwise bottom line if you're carrying and you interact you draw all the attention to you and so you are putting yourself at a great deal of risk, but to save others, most would, that carry would uh, feel that that's worth taking. So with that, I'll close. Thank you. Thank you very much. Student representative report. We're in the process of still trying to recruit student representatives. Sorry, I don't know if this is on. Um, so I have um, two students that are considering it right now. Um, I, I think you guys are an intimidating group from what I hear. So there's a little hesitation from them about what their role is. So I've been trying to just encourage them to come watch the board meeting, um, talk to Will, because Will has made himself available. So um, I will continue to work on that. And I think we're going to tap into Mr. Bonte and um, Mr. Weber so that they can um, look to some of our students that are probably sophomores that can be on the board for a couple of years. So um, I, don't, I don't teach those students yet, so I, I don't have as much of a connect with them, but we'll, uh, we'll get one here hopefully within the next meeting or two. So Thank you very much. Principal reports. Mrs. Woods is actually listed first, so today I will make sure I do so next time um, so any questions thoughts etc for me I guess, I guess I had a question in your report um, mm -hmm. you've been working to improve your trusted adult numbers mm -hmm. um, I think we've seen some movement on that going up mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about the activities or what you're what you're doing to improve those numbers how are you Mm -hmm. how, how are you working with the students to, to get to that point? Yep, so Mrs. Reisinger, our K-6 counselor, has kind of taken that on in regards to a teaching standpoint. So a lot of instructional pieces take place in her class. She also is responsible for collecting that data. So when we had that original baseline, and then it, again, when we did it um, just here recently, um, she, she collects that information from the students. Um, so it's all going through one person. And I would say it's just kind of built into everything. I think about it in small ways, like um, we added a, a PBIS store option called Walk the Block. And it just means a kid can take their hard earned tickets and pay to get time with an adult. And that adult simply walks around 
and B's whatever that kid needs at that time and that's worth it to that kid to save up and and spend on that so we've had a lot of walking the block um, just it's it's to me the small pieces that we're doing that I guess some of them are hard for me to think off the top of my head but that's a prime example of a small you know opportunity that kids are taking full advantage of um, and at first teachers honestly didn't know how to handle that like I gotta teach a class like how am I supposed to walk the block how long do I walk the block and where do I walk the block and like I said it doesn't matter where you walk this kid paid for your time and attention and you can walk whatever you tell you feel the job is done and if you need coverage just tell us and um, so it's just shifting kind of our energy to make those types of experiences possible that I think have a large impact on that and teaching components between point A and point B as well. Yep. So Grandparents Day. Yeah. Do, do you have a number of grandparents that were here? I, I have no idea. No, no idea. they ran every single one of them through Raptor, so I'm sure we could go back and check. It was well attended though, correct? It was extremely well attended, yes. Good. Yep, it was, um, you know, from an analytical standpoint, I think about what went not well, and we've come up with some solutions and things for those pieces, but overall, we've received nothing but positive feedback and from kids and grandparents and parents, so. Good. Yep. Can you give me an example of self-govern, um, just what that means for a student? Which bullet point are you um, to? It was bullet three, communicate and self-govern and regulate the culture. Yep. Yeah, so um, I, I guess I think about it as when, you, um, when you're in a room full of kids, I guess it comes down to philosophy of old school or new school or whatever you want to call it. But research suggests that kids don't necessarily learn as much when they're being taught, more so than when they're engaging in their own learning. I kind of think about it like, who's in control of whether you learn this lesson today or not? Well, you are. You know, I can do a funny dance and say corny jokes and, you know, give you a graphic organizer, but attainment of the learning goals ultimately up to to the student, right? And so this this is goes back to that, that we're also a community of, of people and they need an opportunity to act in those roles, to lead their own culture and their own classroom environment and um, be able to have those conversations and things like that. So to me, that's part of you know, being able to say statements like, I feel blank when this happens, and maybe we could do this. And to me, it's giving them ownership of their environment and um, allowing them to drive a little bit of that, you know, some of that that traditional education may have taken out of their hands. Yep. And I just wanted to comment. Um, sorry, uh, I like to see the collaboration with the other surrounding schools, so that's encouraging to see because I think there's a lot that we can learn from, from other districts and a lot that we can share, so thank you for awesome. being open to that. Thank you. You know that um, you're going to be setting up a peer review process mm -hmm. with teachers. Mm -hmm. Is that including all teachers to get involved in reviewing? Are you going to like pair them up or how? So right working? now it's kind of, I would say, much more um, natural. Okay. Um, so in a discussion, you know, we have these um, leadership teams in our buildings and um, mine at the particular juncture where they made that decision talked about the value of learning from others that every time they walk into someone else's room they learn something um, that they can go apply and and making that learning a priority um, was important to them so right now they've just set a simple expectation to get out and do one um, I have um, kind of two things in place one if they have something specific they want to see and and they let me know I can make sure that they're covered at that specific time to make that function and the other thing is I, I have um, asked Chris Benedict one of our um, substitutes to set aside three days between now and February 16th I believe it is um, that she could come into the building with her own plans ready 
and she could walk in any room and say, "Would you? do you need to go do a peer review? And if they say yes, then she has content and materials planned. So it takes the weight of planning um, lesson plans off the table so that that natural learning and collaboration can take place. Very nice. Thank, Thank you. you. smiling at me <laughs> so I guess I do have some comment the the paying to get a teacher's time reinforces just good behavior because then when the teacher gives you attention during class it's like wow I got rewarded for not having to pay for it rather than mm -hmm. oh the teacher's picking on me or something mm -hmm. so it just I really like that concept so thank you all right thank, thank you, you very guys. much Ms. Whitson. Good evening. <clears throat> I think I was out of town taking care of my grandchildren the last time we had a board meeting. So what questions might you have of me? I don't have a question, but I really was intrigued on I think it was Thanksgiving something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was handwritten notes. Yep. Gratitude letters. Gratitude letters. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Going out and I, I just, I'm very encouraged by that because mm -hmm. the, you, you start feeling old when you say handwritten notes are very powerful, but no matter what age, mm -hmm. what age you are, and the difference between an email and a handwritten note is night and day difference. Mm -hmm. So You're um, right. I thought, I think that was, I hope that the students saw that in giving those out mm -hmm. too. And honestly, the staff and teachers probably saw that too. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was Well, pretty we were cool, hoping so. that was going to be an enjoyable moment. We were trying yeah. to think of building kids as citizens, and mm -hmm. we continue to think of that as the building leadership team and mm -hmm. what can we do to make it real for them. So. Great. I would just, I had a question on the partner one and partner two on the literacy goals. Do they, has that usually been done with a teacher or has that always been paired with Oh, you're kids? looking at last week oh, I'm or right. last month. Oh, geez. Uh, that was in our fluency when we read. Yeah, yeah. Partner Sorry. one reads, partner two records what words, how many words they read correctly and then um, if there was a mistake. So that's part of the process. Got it. Actually, it's going pretty well. I know that Good. we're going to be making some more changes um, in that work. We have everyone working on fluency. Not everybody needs to work on fluency. We're also working with vocabulary and comprehension. And then the next thing will be to begin writing and how we break down that passage so that students become more detail oriented. We're finding that students are reading just to read fast and mm -hmm. some students are not reading for meaning. So we're really working on that too. Got it, cool. And sorry, I, we have a gratitude letter hanging on our fridge because Katie saw and she <laughs> awesome. got one. And awesome. Our I kids haven't I... made the fridge, but this young man did. So yeah, and it I know did that make a difference. I know that some of the students uh, wrote to teachers that they had in the past, so they were probably very surprised that they even received a note. And plus, the teachers were able to walk the students around the building. It wasn't, hey, you just have to sit in here. Now we're going to walk around and hand deliver them. So it was, I think, a great idea, and the BLT team. Um, come up with that so yeah I just wanted to comment I think that's a great idea because I taught my kids as they were growing up to send thank you notes to grandparents mm -hmm. yep. or you know mm -hmm. after holidays or just throughout the year mm -hmm. if they do something with them so I think that's a very special thing to teach kids to mm -hmm. be thankful because so many times they just don't think right about what that really means what they've done for them or what you know, how much that can really mean and how good that can make them yeah. feel also. Yeah, it's a win-win for mm -hmm. all parties. I just want to say again, thank you for putting all your hard work into the Veterans Day <laughs> tribute. It was amazing. It wasn't my hard work. Well, uh, I know it no. wasn't just you. It was no. a it was a ton was of people. And entirely was, those young people, you get out of their way and let them soar. And very impressive. I mean, your son too, but and lots of staff that supported this work. Mm -hmm. So it was awesome, and I'm proud of them, and I hope that we continue to grow. And in fact, I gave a survey just to the students so far. I haven't given it to the uh, adults, but they have some really good ideas for next year. So I was impressed with that, too, because there were some good ideas that come out of it, and very positive. And students that 
you didn't even ask to come help. They just started helping with chairs and tables and I mean, it, and decorations. It was just amazing. Mm -hmm. So yep. Thank good you. community effort. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Bonte. Good evening. So um, I'll just talk a little bit about what we've been doing at the high school. Um, our focus is really at, in our BLT um, is, is looking at both of our DNF F list and our tardies. Um, that is something that um, is uh, is on our on our forefront of, of what we're looking at. And uh, I've actually posed our teachers this week in our PLCs to help solve that problem and looking outside the box on how we're going to better support our kids because as we start to transition to SRG, we need to have all of these different parts of the puzzle already aligned and ready to go, whether it's our retake policy, whether it's our instruction in our classroom. And some of those things we need to readdress with about 75% of our core teachers new this year at the high school, um, kind of relearning a lot of these things or learning it for the first time. We've got teachers that are new to the job, teachers are new to the position, teachers that were in a college class just three months ago. So, I mean, we've got a, we've got a gamut of different, of different staff this year. And so working with each one of them, getting to know them um, so that we can help them grow for the years to come. Um, you know, I, I agree with the speaker sentiments that we, you know, we need to have this as a place that our teachers want to come, they want to stay, they want to grow, they want to be better. Um, and if we're replacing them every couple years, we can't continue. I mean, we're going to have to constantly reteach and, and we know that's going to be part of it, but we can't do it to that extent every year or we're, our product that we put out um, for our students won't be as good. And so that's something that we're looking at um, through our BLT work. Um, and I'll also talk a little bit, Mrs. Detlinger has tasked our admin um, group along with the directors of reading a book called Multipliers. Um, and, and a lot of what, you, what you're hearing is a lot of that. Have, how can we get more of our community, whether it's our students, our staff, our, our teachers, our, our just our community members, to step up and say, I want to help. And, and you see that through the Veterans Day, you see that through the Grandparents Day. All of those different things are engaging our students and our community members in the work that we want to do as a community to help um, better all of us. Do you guys have any questions for me? So, looking at your report, um, you're ta you talked about looking into uh, how to reduce the number of tardies uh, students have throughout the day. Is that a big problem? Oh, huge problem. And uh, I can tell you that, um, you know, the first month or so of my job was pretty in involved with just dealing with behavior, getting to know students, things like that. Um, and then I got that first TARD report, um, and I had 70 students that were at the top level of our TARDIS. You, you can't go back and meet with 70 students and readdress it. And so what, what we've had conversations with staff is, one of the things that I noticed when I'm walking through the halls in those first couple of weeks, we didn't have any teachers in the hallways. Um, and if we don't have teachers in the hallways getting kids to class, that's an issue. So we've kind of ad addressed that um, and we've started to see those numbers come down. Um, but we're at a part, I mean, and I'll just say it, you know, we all make mistakes or, or don't get things done, but it, I mean, you can't address every single one of those behaviors when you first get that report. You've got 80 kids to meet with and they all have the top level of your consequence. We, we can't do that. And so um, one of the things that we're talking about in our BLT groups and in our staff is what are we going to do to better address this for second semester so that we're going to have to start over is essentially what we're saying and so that the kids know exactly what the expectation is, what the consequences for not meeting that expectation are. Uh, because I guess I, coming in, I didn't realize it was that big of a problem with kids getting to class. Um, but it is a, a pretty big problem um, from time to time. And, and with those really chronic people, we're just honing in on those. Um, but with just the sheer number of the previous, it, it's going to be really hard to go back at this point in the semester. So we'll address it for second semester. Thank you. Do you think it could be that there's not enough time to get from class? I mean, are you looking at the data? No, like, I, do they need know, to go to the bathroom? Do they, do they need to go to their locker? Did the teacher hold them up? Did mm -hmm. they have questions? I mean, I, I think that you're going to have a, a couple of those off kind of situations where, yeah, a kid needed to go to the bathroom, um, but. But for those students, if they check in and they do the things they're supposed to do, they, they wouldn't be counted tardy. Um, and, and I can tell you from um, when I come in the morning and I have to walk my kid all the way down to the daycare and come back for a 7.15 meeting, I can walk down and back in, in three minutes, no problem. Um, and I'm walking with a, with a four year or a five year old now. Uh, so I, I don't think it's a problem. Um, those kids that come from the CTE building, I know they let them go about a minute early to get them back in the building. I, I don't think it's a time issue in, in that regard. Um, Three minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And then I guess I was going to ask on the D's and F's, is it higher this year, lower? Is it about um, the same? What I, I kind of did, you know, and again, I, I wasn't looking at the data from last year. Talking gotcha. to the coaches, they said for this last poll, it's pretty typical because it's in, it's in between sports seasons. And so they said that that, but I don't know if that's just a way to defer the issue and just say it's just normal. To me, it's not normal for a third year student to have an F. Um, and so we, we've got to do something different, right? And, and so that starts in the classroom and it starts with instruction. And so um, my, my weekly that I sent out this week to, to all staff, I said our PLC time this week is going to be used to solve this issue. Um, with 70 students on a DNF lift, so we have to do something different to help support these kids and make them accountable, but hold them accountable, right? We can't just say you need to do it and if you don't do it, we're not going to do anything about it, right? There's got to be that next step. So how am I going to continue to hold you accountable because um, you know, our job is in local parentis and, and, and our, their parents aren't here when they're here and so we have to be their parent and we have to hold them accountable um, and, and at the end of the day you might have a few students that aren't going to pass a class but I believe that almost every single one of our class students can pass every single class that they can take um, if they put their mind to it right and so um, you know like what Mrs. Woods is doing and what Mrs. Um, Whiston are doing all those things will trickle up um, we've just we've just got to have a few years to get all these parts of the puzzle in place and I think we're all doing good work we're creating multipliers within our people um, and, I, and I think our students are understanding that they're going to be held accountable um, it's just one of those things where you can't do everything right now the first day right you've got to kind of do things slowly you have to figure out who your staff is you got to keep them um, engaged in the work we're doing as well as keeping our students engaged in what they need to be doing hmm. you mentioned that you mentioned that um, the coaches say it's in between seasons that's that's what so, that's what a couple coaches have told me so how many students on this list are athletes are athletes that's a good question i don't i don't have that data right now okay because that I, would be something interesting to yeah, look into be. because you shouldn't just be trying to get good grades during your sports season. 100%. Yep. So that we, seems like a disconnect. We if need it to make is. sure that our students are going to school and they have a purpose for why they're here. And until mm -hmm. we create that purpose for every single one of our students, um, you're, you're going to have those Fs, right? So we have to create that purpose. Like, even if it's like, hey, I don't enjoy math, but I know I'm going to do math because I have this goal in mind and I have to cross this bridge to get there. Um, and so we have to create that mindset for all of our students. And, and that's a hard task. Any other questions? All right. Yeah, thank, thank you. Mr. Weber. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Mine's pretty straightforward, a little easy this, this time around. <clears throat> do you do anything specific to celebrate the exit of a special ed kid? Um, so in we do individually so okay. a as a team we do um, we talk about it we recognize it in our district plc anytime it happens we actually do it for the 45 day outs as well which we have two more now since i sent that so that are on 45 day outs so the goal would be is that we could be at seven you know here in the next couple months um, individually with a student you know you have a, a iep meeting to exit and depending on the age of the student is if they're in that meeting or not and so a lot of times we'll ask, especially with the older kids, to come to that meeting at the end um, so that we can give them praise and do all that. Um, I know as we ended up last year, a handful had in May had earned their way out. Um, and we were, you know, I, Mr. Castro was here and we would tell, you know, Ms. Dentlinger, we would tell, he'd be like, hey, he just exited, how great is that? And I remember with two, two students specifically, because they, they were in special programming outside I-35, then transitioned into I-35 last year, and then transitioned out of SPED. I mean, it went, that quick and so um, it yeah we make it kind of a big deal it's, it's pretty cool so are there any other questions all right thank you very much superintendent's report So I have a couple of things on here. Um, we had the um, Iowa Association of School Board Conference um, two weeks ago already. Uh, and I think that that's always kind of a good time to think about 
processes, how we do things, look at what other school districts do, just maybe develop collegial relationships with other people who do similar jobs as us. Um, I, was, I was pleasantly surprised when um, one of my former students, um, when I was a teacher way back when, in Carroll came up to me and he's been on the school board in Solon. And, um, and when I was teaching government class, that's one of the things that we, they had an option of doing is just going to a school board meeting and just seeing what the function was or a city council meeting or, you know, just how to be active in government. So I was really excited that he, um, he was able to, to visit with me. So that was, that was one of the highlights for me anyway, in addition to some of the other things. I know that Jeremy was there for a couple of the days and Melissa was there. So anything you guys want to add about the sessions you went to? I went to a session on um, engaging learning and what does that look like? And the, the, the group um, was kind of a collective group from multiple different agencies and entities. So there was AEA, NASA, um, a school librarian or a, a media specialist, um, a teacher and her kids. And so it was kind of this eclectic group of people who made a learning, um, learning opportunity for students um, and, and applied it to the world that they live in. It was a sixth grade class. So it was really interesting. And I think the more about how um, Mr. Stewart talked about our, our you know, internet capabilities and how we have to sometimes look beyond ourselves. I think one of you mentioned the Pleasantville um, school coming to visit and what are we doing in our three-year-old program, like making those connections and, and using each other to be better is I think what we're gonna have to do. Um, and so I, I was pleased with that presentation and, and kind of um, the takeaways from that. We also had, um, I thought our lunch speaker on um, Thursday was excellent. She was talking about communication and what that means, um, both for the sender and the receiver in the world that we now live in. And I thought that that was engaging is that we talk about cell phone policy and we talk about um, kids, you know, social interactions and how they, how they address problems sometimes. Those were all really good things to kind of bring to the forefront again and just devote time to it. So do you guys want to share anything from your? Yeah, I attended a couple of them that one was about social media responses and just communicating, communicating, um, you know, how, when and how to communicate, how soon to the public. And so that was good to just hear what other schools are doing, what other methods they're using, um, and just their process. Uh, connecting with other board members, that's always great. Um, again, just the collaboration to hear what they're doing in their other districts. Um, I sat on Finance 201 with Ted, so luckily Ted was next to me, that was great. <laughs> so, so um, but yeah, I learned a lot, and uh, there's, um, there's a lot of good things with IASB. Um, there's a lot of resources that they have, so. I think just to continue to, to tap into that is, is, is good to know that we have that, so. I, uh, <laughs> this is the mic that hums, and so usually try and turn it off and lift it on. Anyway, so I, uh, I attended three days and some of the sessions were better than others. I mean, you're always gonna have that. Um, one thing that uh, is apparent to me is we have a lot of dedicated employees at ISAB who are working very hard to support our mission um, and uh, the mission of every school in the state. Uh, the uh, session on Friday was extremely beneficial. It was presidents and vice presidents of school boards. And uh, it wasn't as well attended as I thought it probably could have been. Um, but we talked a lot about the security reviews that were going on. We talked a lot about social media, uh, how boards use social media, how communities use social media, and uh, what, what the uh, ramification of, 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 of those programs are. Um, and we also talked uh, quite a bit about um, what steps should be taken to secure buildings. Uh, Storm Lake and or uh, Storm Lake and or Spirit Lake and, and Cherokee, neither one of them were there, uh, which a lot of a lot of folks had commented it'd been nice if they would have been, so we could have asked them some of the questions that I think we all had. On, on their process and why they've taken the steps they have. 
Um, we just we talked about insurance as well, and uh, ISAB's stance on that whole thing is that they aren't supportive of moving in that direction just because of the insurance factor. So it was it was a good week. I thought it was uh, very informative. So and I appreciate everybody taking the time to go. So the other um, the other thing that we've spent, Jen Boffman and I spent quite a bit of time on um, was our roundtable discussions, which we um, I instituted the first year that I came, uh, the idea that staff, regardless if you were a custodian or um, a cook or a teacher or um, you know office support, whatever your role was, um, you would have the opportunity to, to visit with me about anything that, that you wanted to talk about. So um, we have we typically try and have two round tables a year and um, Jen Boffman and I meet and we really just listen. Um, what's going well? What, what suggestions do you have? What do you have concerns about? Um, kind of trying to get an idea of what, what's happening from a teacher lens. Um, we ask that the directors and the administrators are not present because, you know, if there's a concern there, then we want to be able to have an open conversation around it. So um, those have been well received. Um, for the, for the most part, we have um, one group that doesn't as, a, attend as much, but I, I have a lot of those people that just stop in my office, so I, I feel pretty good that we have an idea of what's going on. Um, so themes that came out of this year, um, a lot of teachers are really excited about the culture, about the work around data and using data to make those decisions, which we've talked about with our MTSS model and, and kind of putting that in place for the last couple of years, and they're actually seeing um, you know, our administrators take a lead on what that looks like in guiding those conversations and discussions. So there's a lot of positivity there. Um, there's a lot of uh, excitement about the culture, Veterans Day, Grandparents Day, um, the things where we're getting people back into the building and celebrating um, kind of what we value here and what we, um, what we wanna be known for. And then um, we, we typically have lots of concerns about communication. I would say we don't have many, but the ones we have are very easy for us to target and address. And so we've had some conversations already around that. Um, and then there were some questions about, you know, there's been a lot of talk, I would say, in the last two years, three years about, um, you know, teacher apprenticeships and para-apprenticeships and um, getting additional subs in the building and, and what can we do? So generating ideas around hiring and retention. And so we have a discussion, I would say, with, with two or three of the groups every year about that and come away with some good ideas. So um, I don't know if you, you get social media or not, but um, we had in the tri-corner, they thought if we were very explicit about um, the positions we had open and that you can work the hours that your kids are in school and that you can you know, be off the days that your kids are off, that that might appeal to, to a base of people who are at home and just don't know. So we talked about that and put that in the paper as well as on social media. So the idea is how are we target, knowing that not everybody reads the paper, not everybody gets social media, but just trying to get it out there in, in three very different um, but strong communities. So um, those are things that we took ideas from and we started with even last week. Um, so those are all um, themes that kind of came out of this year's uh, roundtable that we'll be working on at the administrative level uh, and, and recognizing the positive things, but also kind of coming up with plans of attack for those things that we know we need to still work on. So those are the roundtables. Anybody have questions about that process or? And then I just have um, the Veterans Day celebration and the Grandparents Day celebration. Again, I, I felt like we were you know, it's truly who we want to be, right? It's, it's that celebration of our students. It's the celebration of, of who they are, where they come from. It's about our, you know, and, and the pride in we have. And, you know, I, I'll just give you two images. So we're in here for Veterans Day. And I think Melissa was here for that. It was kind of rainy and misty. But every person that came in was just, you know, just smiling, right? I mean, you, you have to smile when you're in a school because it's just so loud and so fun and so much energy. And um, I remember that the band had been practicing and they went through each of the um, different armed forces, their theme song. And as that song was being played, the veterans stood up. And it was just, it was so powerful. And our kids were just in, 
almost awe, right? Like they were, they were just glued and our students performed it so well and I know they were all nervous and it was just a great way to showcase not only our talents and our kids but also recognize um, the great people we have in our community that we wanna, we wanna continue to be, be a part of our school. So that was really, um, really awe-inspiring. And then Grandparents Day I wasn't here for, um, I had an appointment, but I, I'll tell you one of the stories a grandmother told me is she said, I just was so excited that I, apparently they got seated first. And when they were seated, the kids filed in and were sitting up there. And so the grandparents were actually turned around looking for their grandkids and waving. You know how it's kind of reversed when it's the other, you know, grandkids are usually looking around at their grandparents. So the grandparents are all turned around waving to their grandma and grandpa and, um, or the grandma and grandpa were waving to their kids. And the smiles and the pictures, I think, really spoke um, up to the, to the enjoyment that day. So we look forward to more of those things in the spring. Um, the other thing that I, I don't have on this agenda, but I do want to bring up because it's something that we talked about uh, in our closed session last time, um, kind of our continued conversation around safety. Uh, we did have our safety audits, but I didn't get those until the Tuesday that, or the Monday that this was being published. So it was published on Tuesday. I didn't get those till Monday. So those will be on the agenda for next time. Um, and we'll review those. But I, I, the safety team um, is meeting and going through that. The administrators actually have it kind of in their court right now and are going through it. And then that goes to the sheriff's office and then we can submit that to the state based on, on kind of that collective um, audit. So that's still continuing on. It's just not on the agenda for this week because of um, the timing of when we receive those reports. Any questions for me? All right, thank you, Sharon. Our uh, consent agenda items. This does require a motion and a second before we can take action. Um, everybody should have gotten the past meeting minutes. Uh, any corrections should be noted. Uh, monthly bills and financial statement. I believe we all got our, our uh, additional bills on the table. And then open enrollment information was in the consent items and our resignations and contracts, which I will go through right now. Don Ferber resigns as an associate. Bonnie Hassermer resigns as an associate. Bobby Heitink resigns as a high school robotics assistant. Josh Klein resigns as facilities, maintenance, middle school, baseball, and high school throwing coach. Maddie Olson hired as a second semester kindergarten teacher. Uh, Zadie Hatfield hired as a long-term sub. Katie Silliman hired as a part-time associate. Katie Klingensmith moved from high school head robotics to high school assistant robotics. Amanda Geddes hired as high school head robotics. Heather Wells hired as the drama director. Heidi Boyd resigns as family consumer science teacher. Gloria Brott assigned as interim family consumer science teacher through the 2022-2023 school year, and Jessica Duggins transferred to associate. These do require a motion and a second, so I'd entertain a motion at this time. I'll make a motion to approve and the discuss and approve consent items. Excuse me. <laughs> I'd second that. It's been properly moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda items. Before we vote, I got one quick question on um, the long-term sub that was hired. So can you explain what that position is? Is that a full semester, full year benefits? What is that? long-term right. sub so this represents. so we did this last year um, second semester with our student teacher we so we had a student teacher first semester and then we hired them second semester as a long-term sub the advantage is they're available every day to us for subbing which we've all every day this year we've needed a sub so they would be our first person um, the only difference is is they're hired at that higher sub rate and so if they, if they are committing to us every day, then they're just getting paid that higher sub, right? That's, that's the only 
kind of advantage for them. But for teachers that are finishing up student teaching in the, in the fall, it's a way to get them acclimated in our system to see if they're a good fit. They get to see different levels. Um, and so that's, that's what that position is. We tried it last year, had a lot of success. I think the person didn't work one day um, the whole second semester. And so it was, it was kind of a win for her. And she's now in our district as a teacher. And so it was a way to kind of um, hopefully build some capacity around what we do here and what we value and yeah. are there any other questions all right there is a motion on the table and it has been properly seconded all those in favor of approving the consent agenda items as presented signify by aye aye, aye. 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 opposed We'll go to the SBRC application for increasing enrollment, open enrollment out, and LEP instructive instruction beyond five years. This does require a motion and a second for us to approve. So this is, um, we bring this every year. Um, the, the school budget review committee um, allows additional authorized spending authority um, for three circumstances, and they're listed there. If we have an increase in enrollment, so for example, if we had a, a huge influx of sixth grade students, it would give us the spending authority to hire a teacher knowing that the next year we would see the funds come from that. Um, if we have um, an, an uh, open enrollment out number um, that was not counted in this year's budget, it's a way for a year to, to make up that, that difference. And then for ELL, our English language learners, some students need more than the five years that's allocated and the SBRC recognizes that and allows to ask for additional funding or spending authority for that. So um, this is really just that we can use the spending authority if we need to. Um, you would have to take a vote um, actually when we bring the budget in March if you wanna increase the spending authority by that amount. We just have to put in the request to do that now. And so if you look at our, our current um, our current enrollment, the only one that qualifies is that second option, open enrollment out. And this year we had an increase of 21 students that were not counted last year in that number that we can apply for the, um, the funding for. So that's where that 151, um, seven, six, $767 comes from. That's the most we can ask for additional spending authority. And right now it's just to, to make the request. Are there any questions on this? Then this does require a motion and a second for us to take action. I'll move to approve the uh, SBRC application for increasing enrollment, open enrollment out, and LEP instruction beyond five years. I'd second that. It's been properly moved and seconded to increase uh, SBRC application for increasing enrollment, open enrollment out, and LEP instruction beyond five years. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? That brings us to the end of our agenda for the regular board meeting. Um, we would need a motion to adjourn at this point. Move to adjourn. I'll second it. Properly moved adjourn. and seconded that we adjourn. All those in favor, signify aye. by aye. 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 Opposed, we are adjourned.
So we miss what just happened. Okay, that's what we did. We were like, hmm. Sharon. You know, you know. At this time, I'd like to call, um, officially call this annual meeting of the I-35 school board to order. And at this time, I will open the floor for nominations for the office of president of the I-35 board of directors. I would ask that nominations be made in the form of a motion. I'll move to nominate Jeremy Mask as president of the board. It does require a second. Do we have any more nominations? If you want to make a second, you can at any time. I'll make a second to the motion to nominate Jeremy as the president of the board. 
Okay, let's take a, a vote. Um, answer A or nay when I read your name. Roger? Yay. Melissa? Yay. Jeremy? Yay. Monica? Yay. Eddie? Aye. Okay. So now I turn the meeting over to you, Jeremy. All right, we will move right into the election for vice president. Uh, I would entertain a motion for vice president. I'd nominate Roger Canoy for vice president. Are there any other nominations for this office? Is there a second to the motion? I would second the nomination. It's been properly moved and seconded that Roger Canoy uh, be the vice president of the Interstate 35 Board of Directors. All those in favor signify by aye. Or is this a roll call vote again? Yep. Voice vote. Yep. Jeremy Mask, aye. Jeremy? Aye. Roger? Aye. Melissa? Aye. Monica? Aye. Eddie? Aye. Congratulations. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Iowa, and that you will faithfully and impartially, to the best of your ability, discharge the duties of the Office of Vice President of the Board of Directors in the Interstate 35 Community School District, as now and hereafter, Required by law. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. That moves us to the next item on the agenda, discuss and or approve the uh, committee representation. Um, Sharon, do you want to go through this or do you want me to? Yeah, this is um, all of our boards that we're asked to, that board members are asked to serve on both in the county and at the school level. So um, if you've served in this role, I think it obviously makes sense that if you live in Warren County, you'd be considered um, maybe the Warren County representative, same thing for um, our other counties, but it uh, doesn't necessarily mean you have to because you actually represent the whole school district. Um, so we just need to go through and, and determine who's gonna represent the school board in those committees or conferences. So Warren County Conference Board. I did it last year and I'd be, or the last term and I'd be happy to. But happy to, you know, if anybody else lives in Warren County, I don't think they do though. We, we can. Well, you do, if you'd like, if you'd. Okay, yeah, yeah, perfect. I didn't hear that. Well, uh, so she said she'd join me um, oh, okay. to the first meeting. Okay. So. See if she wants to do it. <laughs> Good thinking, Monica. They're, they're, they're intense meetings, I tell you what. Uh, Madison County Conference Board. I was on it last year. Jeremy is the only other Madison <laughs> County that I've, I've done it a number of years. I still got the notices as well, so um, it doesn't I'll, matter. The, you can sign me up for it. It's fine. Roger. If you're ever, ever unable to attend, let me know, and I might scoot over. Gotcha. Clark County Conference I'll Board. <laughs> <laughs> Negotiations Committee. I was on that uh, this past year and um, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I wouldn't mind doing that again. And I think we had two on, on it last mm -hmm. year. So. Can you just talk about how often do they meet? Sure. Um, we meet, when, when we start negotiating, it's, 
I, I almost want to knock on wood, but it's um, been a, a fairly um, a fairly productive process. So um, some of our groups meet, we have a meeting or two. Um, at the most, I think we've had three with one of the groups um, over the years. So it's usually three or four meetings um, beginning in the spring, and it's usually about a month time commitment, I would say, from beginning to end of the process. Is that teacher contracts? It's teachers. So we have two different groups okay. that we negotiate with, okay. the support staff and the teachers. So we have two different groups that we negotiate with. I'll take a seat. Monica? So Roger and Monica? School Improvement Advisory Committee? I would actually enjoy being on that again. And I think we had two reps for this one as well. We, we don't have to, but just if anybody else wants to be a part of that, they sure can be. So I was on the Facilities Committee, or M, a kind of subcommittee, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that even counts, but um, I would, if somebody's interested in the Facilities Committee, I would do the SIAC or f swap. Um, I would swap with you. Okay. Just a, a different yeah. change of pace. I'd love that. Yeah. Okay. Thank so Thank Jeremy you. and Eddie for school improvement, and then facilities, I heard Melissa. I'd like to do that. I'd like to keep going with that. And Roger. Okay. this requires a board action to approve not for I mean you're just getting a kind of a you're volunteering to be on that committee so you can I mean yes I would say just to be on the safe side but yeah I mean so we'd need a motion to approve the committees as presented yes I'd move to approve the committees as re representations as discussed and I would move to second that it's been properly moved and seconded to approve the committee's representation as discussed. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> All right, now we move on to the superintendent's recommendation on annual designations. I, I can so, read No, I, it, it makes no difference. Um, for our board secretary treasurer, um, it's recommended that Ted Bauer serve in that role. And if it's okay, I'll just go through all of these and then you can, we can have discussion at the end of all of them. Um, school depository recommend Union State Bank and um, ICEJIT, which is the Iowa School Joint Investment Trust. Um, the Union State Bank, our Truro maximum depository amount is 10 million and the ICEJIT maximum dep depository amount is also 10 million. Legal counsel, I recommend Allers and Cooney, uh, school insurance, I recommend I EMC insurance, uh, official district publication, that's where all of our minutes are published, I recommend the Madisonian, regular board meeting date, and Reduced lunch steering officer, I recommend Deanne Strange. Our reconsideration committee, I recommend Heather Gelsma, Camden Allen, Katie Monroe, Brayton Weber, Jill McDonald, Tanya Donahue, and Sue Corneliuson. And we do need to fill a student rep on that if that committee is joined um, or, or reassigned this next school year for, um, for its purpose. And chief negotiator, I recommend um, myself. Are there any questions? Is it, is it required that we have the same provider if we approve them today? So if, for example, if we make a change throughout the school district to address the speaker's considerations, mm -hmm. can we change at that time? Yes, or these... I mean, we just have to take board action. Right, so Correct. it would just require board action. Right, and if, if, if you wanna address the speaker's concerns, you can always um, continue with what we currently use until you take an action 
you know, right. so if we, don't, I, if we don't change, right now we have EMC and we have Ollers and Clooney. Yeah. Um, so you can take those off. They would still serve in our role because we have to have somebody. And then if we decide to take action that's different, we can make that kind of in the same process we're doing for this. So you could do it either way. You can well, either we could approve, approve this. And then take a reverse gear if we decide Correct. some different path of action Correct. in the future. Yes. Or, or, okay. Okay. Yes. That's I mean, if you, if you don't, if you take those off, they're still serving in that role until we take a different action. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. If we were to look into, you know, say somebody else for insurance, I know the school has used EMC for quite a while mm -hmm. and it's one, it's a lot of school districts in the state use EMC. Um, a vast majority. Mm -hmm. Is there somebody else that we could look into Are yeah i mean we definitely others? can see if there's okay. other um, providers yeah mm -hmm. i know that there are some districts just like health insurance there's always mm -hmm. different providers but um yeah we can we can definitely have that conversation okay. i think i think my philosophy in making these recommendations is we've had good service we've had um fast response time we get um Kind of what we're asking for if it's emc we get you know an, an evaluation of what they'll provide and what they won't um, we've asked about you know for example our sporting teams and how their insurance works and our and our board and how that insurance works so all of those things
seems like a fair distribution, actually. <laughs> or <clears throat> comments so last year we were at the beginning i i feel that the 20 is is an important number for us to to continue that longevity and that longevity it's milestone 
Could be an amendment. I can't amend her motion. You can offer to do a friendly amendment if she accepts it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let her think for herself. No, I would, I would accept it. I would amend the motion to be 60 years of age and 20 years of service. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd just say that, you know, it's it sounds silly. It's a, it's a balance, just like everything else in life. Um, we want to use this to encourage teachers to teach in our in our district for a long time and and grow roots here but on the other hand look at how many teachers we replaced this last year can we afford to do that every year we can't afford to do that every year so realistically it's our job to make sure that we have our teaching positions filled and i i think that's i think that's where we're, i think leaving it the way we had it last year i think that's very important Years of a couple of the yep. teachers on that list. Because, mm -hmm. you know, doing it that way, it's not like, it's not like all of them would qualify right. for it. Mm -hmm. so. yep. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second the motion. It's been properly moved and seconded to offer early retirement to. Um, age 60 and over and 
saying it
you know, fields are our big space. We moved to the west there. your next steps like like what are the steps we would take in order to
And, and if the board... Our coaches... Minority pick... Yes, we have a lot of activities that week. Okay, Wednesday, December 21st at 5 p.m. We will get that out in multiple formats to the public. All right, thank you very much for everybody getting their calendars out. I will entertain a motion to adjourn at this point. Move to adjourn. It's been